Yeah. Okay. So forces, let me do the summary first, and then we'll try some example problems. So here's the summary. Of what's called intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces. There's three that you need to know. H bonding, two, dipole, specifically permanent dipole, and three, London, which is, it's also called dispersion or London dispersion, and this is an induced or temporary or instantaneous dipole. The, the regular dipole is called permanent. Okay, here's a couple factors. Actually, all three are dipoles. Okay, they're all dipoles. H bond is a very strong dipole. They're all dipoles. Okay? This is an order of strength, actually. So, strength goes this way. Okay? There is one way that London can overtake the H bond. How's that? Yeah, size. If it get, as it gets bigger, the strength gets larger. That's only for London. Which one of these appear in all molecules? London. London. Okay? Usually what we want you to do is determine the most dominant one. Okay? Other thing, I'll do this a different color. These two here, the two bottom ones, are called Van der Waals. Okay? They're Van der Waal type forces. Alright, now there's a second part to this summary. If uh, the force is strong, <laughs> Then, this <laughs> one. Okay. You increase the boiling point is strong. I'm going somewhere else with this. Okay. The boiling point is strong. What's gamma? Surface tension. Gamma is strong. Surface tension. And then three. Uh, viscosity is strong. Velocity. And four, the vapor pressure is weak, small, low. Okay? That's the summary table, that's always going to be true. So, uh, for example, when you determine the, the molecule with the strongest force, intermolecular force, that molecule will have the highest boiling point and the highest surface tension, the highest viscosity, and the lowest vapor pressure. If you can remember this, you're set. Okay, now let's do some examples of how that would work. Uh, go to the next page. Which one has the higher vapor pressure? Before you do this question, determine what's the dominant force in each. So what's the dominant force here? Okay, the H bond. How about the second one? Not H bond. Not London. Yeah, by a default, I guess. Side okay, why is that true? There's H bonding. If you want to go back to the page, if you did, if you don't know this, know this now. This is H plus nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine. If you didn't know that, write it down. Okay, not hydrogen. And nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. The example I wrote down was H2S. S is not does not count. You need what's called an electronegative element. S is not that electronegative. So, a lot. They both have London. You're right about that, but that's not the dominant force for the second one because this molecule looks like this. Does that have a dipole? Yes. Right there. If it has a dipole, it has a dipole, right? <laughs> uh, how I determine if something has a dipole is as follows. I draw off the Lewis structure on paper or in your head. And then I determine, is it asymmetric? Okay, this goes back on the summary page, I guess. Uh, dipole means the molecule is polar, if you've heard that term. Polar is the same as having a dipole. And that means the molecule is asymmetric. If it is asymmetric, it's polar and it has a dipole. If there's no dipole, 
it's not polar and it should look symmetric. That's the way I do those. That's an easy way to do it if you're good at visualizing something. So you get back to the other problem. Notice H2S is asymmetric. I don't know if that was the fast way there. So, yeah. H2S is asymmetric, thus it has a dipole. That's how I determine that. Okay, anyways. Now, which one has the higher force? I'll circle it. Yeah, this one's got to have the higher force. H bonding much stronger than the dipole. Which one has the higher vapor pressure? Remember, the stronger force has the lower vapor pressure. See how this works? Okay. Maybe we should try a couple more here. Uh, oh, I got a good one for you. Okay. <laughs> Oxygen versus sulfur. Oh, here's an annoying one. Okay. What is the dominant force? Oxygen. Yeah, they're both London. If there's nothing else, it's London. It's the default. Okay. And in your class, they might have called it dispersion force or something else, but, you know, this induced dipole. Okay, now which one has the higher vapor pressure? Oxygen. Sulfur. Okay, which one has the higher force first? Oxygen. Why? Sulfur. Ah, sulfur. Why sulfur? It is sulfur. This has the higher force. Why? Bigger. It's bigger. Everything that's bigger has more London action going on. The higher molar mass, etc. So the higher vapor pressure has to be here. Does that make sense? Which one has a higher boiling point? Yeah, sulfur. You see how that works? Higher boiling point, it actually has a higher viscosity and surface tension. Okay, does that kind of make sense? It's opposite. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, raise your hand and tell me why. Yeah. Electronegativity and London aren't really related. Electronegativity is related to the strength of a dipole. The higher the difference in electronegativity, the higher the strength of the dipole. Yeah, let's do one. Stick with me, we can do it. Okay. What's the dominant force in both of these? Dipole. Dipole, they're asymmetric, they have no H bonding. Okay, which one has the higher force? NAF. NAF because? Yeah, there's a higher difference in electronegativity, meaning the fluorine is more electronegative. Okay? So the higher vapor pressure? Yeah, this has the higher VP because it has the weaker force. This one over here would have the higher boiling point, the higher gamma, the higher viscosity. Okay. See how that works? Is this making slightly more sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go on. Wait, that's a question. Yeah. If you have a, a question on a test, unless your instructor wants to punish you somehow, it should be obvious that something, if it has a dominating London force, is really, really big. It should look very big somehow. <laughs>